when I was thinking about Easter today, my mind started wandering to, um, yeah, the tomb and yeah, the cross, but the garden of Gethsemane before the cross. And um, that's a tough thing to think about for like a ton of reasons. Um, so you think about it from Jesus' perspective and you know the story. Um, it's in the New Testament of your Bible if you want to go and take a look there. Um, but you know, Jesus went to this garden to pray and um, there's symbolism there too. It's pretty crazy. It's, it's where they squeezed the oil out of olives. And I think about the tremendous pressure that had to have been on Jesus. He took his friends in that day. And uh, and then he went a little further and he took his closest friends. His closest friends on earth. He took them with him. He knew what he was facing. He was facing um, death. He was facing separation from the Father um, that he had never experienced before. Um, and so he took his friends, his, his closest friends, three of them a little further. And he said, watch and pray with me, watch and pray. And he went on ahead of them and he prayed. He came back. They were sleeping. He woke them up and said, come on guys, come on guys. I need you. He went back and prayed some more and the pressure on him was so much that the Bible says that he actually sweat drops of blood. But he still said, Father, not my will, but yours be done. There's so much in this story. It's huge. Um, but let's just stick to the main thing that I'm going after here. And we'll get to the other stuff later. But he goes back. They're sleeping. They're his best friends. He was asking them to pray. Stay alert. He went back three times and three times they were sleeping. They were tired. They were human. But they failed him. They failed him. And I, I wonder sometimes about things. Do you think that Jesus felt hurt? Well, the Bible says he was human. He was very God and very man. And I believe that that broke his heart. I believe that he never felt more alone. No one would stand with him. But you know what? He chose to go to the cross anyways, knowing that he would be flogged within an inch of his life, knowing that he would be nailed to a cross and um, die there, knowing that it would take three days in death before he rose from the dead. He died anyways. They failed him and he still moved forward to die on their behalf, on your behalf, on my behalf. And I would say his word for us today is, of course you're going to fail. Of course you're going to fail. But guess what? I died for you. I died for you anyways. So go in the strength today of the knowledge that God knows you're going to fail. He knows you have failed and he knows you will fail. And guess what? He chose to die for you, to save you anyways.